Will you pray once more with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of your word, for the blessings of scripture. And as we seek to reflect on your word, O oh God, guide our hearts and minds. Fill us with your spirit. Help us, protect us, and guide us. That the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts together will be acceptable in your sight. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. So, to the best of my recollection, it was about 1994. I was sitting at lunch with a group of camp counselors and a keynoter, a keynote speaker, um, preparing for the high school camp that was going to follow in the week ahead. And in that gathering, there was a um, seminary student. I should pause here. I know you've had some interns through the years. This was a first year seminary student. First year seminary students know everything. <laughs> they are amazing. The things they know because they haven't learned what they don't know yet. And this seminary student is sitting in conversation with a 20 plus year pastor with a doctor of ministry arguing over this psalm. And I'm not talking disagreeing. I'm talking people in the restaurant looking around, wondering what's going on, arguing about this psalm. Oh, I should pause. I forgot to tell you this. I meant to call my friend and, and, and get a copy of the slide. Hopefully next week I'll get it. Because we're going to be doing, and I know you Bible study, but stay with me, Summer in the Psalms um, through this summer. We're going to be looking at um, about um, 10 or 11, I think it is, uh, psalms through the course of the summer as ways of making application to life. You saw that if you, were, if you read your newsletter closely, I know. But uh, we're finally to that because we had to get through the two weeks leading up to Pentecost and Pentecost itself. So here we are finally launching into the summer and the psalms. And I will tell you that um, as a rule, if you're reading ahead on the eights, you're probably on the right track. So this week is Psalm number 8. Next week will probably, I think, is Psalm number 18. And then 28. And then, but we're not going to do 118 because that's uh, really long. Or is that the short one? Is it 119? It's 119. Anyway, mostly on the 8s, but not completely, not exclusively. So today we're on Psalm number 8. This is um, a Psalm of David to the leader. Um, I want to unpack that for a moment first for those that weren't at Bible study because what this means most likely is David sat down and wrote this poem out and went to the worship leader of the synagogue or the temple and said, we need to use this. And as king, the leader of course said, absolutely, this is fabulous. And, and here we are. Uh, but, but this song, back to the... Um, the, uh, the restaurant um, the day before camp begins. Um, specifically, um, looking at verses 5 through really the end, which was, you have made them, talking about humans, a little lower than God. I don't know if everybody could hear that, but I was getting this little bitty ring that was just driving me crazy. Thank you. I'm glad to know someone could hear it. Dick could. Um, made them a little lower than God um, and crowned them with glory and honor. You have given them dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. And what the keynoter was arguing was this is representative of, among other things, our position at the top of the food chain, loosely translated, as he ate his steak sandwich. The seminarian who 
was arguing and had recently become a militant vegan <laughs> was saying just the opposite. We've been given responsibility for all these things. We have to take care of them all. It's actually a servant leadership kind of attitude. And the debate and argument that followed literally left a dozen of us sitting around the table <laughs> wide-mouthed and gawking at this passionate argument that continued to build. Now, the irony of all of that is as much as first-year seminarians know everything, 20-year pastorates with doctors, doctor, pastors with doctorates, don't get their minds changed. <laughs> Which means that when this came up again during the week, all that seminarian had done was put fuel on the fire for the keynoter to really hammer against her primary points. It was quite an amusing week of camp, to say the least. But as we look at this psalm, as we experience this early reflection of David, I want you to reflect on how amazed David is at the mighty of God, at the might and power and wonder of God. Sorry, the mighty. What's wrong with you? Let me put it this way. I don't know how much you know about David. You know about the worship of David, if you will, the line of David, because Jesus comes from that. What you need to know about David is he had a really healthy ego. <laughs> Okay, no, wait, I have a really healthy ego. David had a massive ego. <laughs> so for David to marvel at the wonder of God is noteworthy in itself because I'm pretty sure David thought no one was better than David. And on top of that, to then say and glorify humanity and say, you've made us just a little lower than you. Now we see David, right? Oh, of course, as I sit down to write my poem, I'm just a little lower than God. Just, you know, there's God and I'm right. Yeah, I hear. <laughs> now I'm talking for me, not for David, right? But nevertheless, this psalm is a reflection on the marvels of not only God's creation, but the marvels of the fact that God now I am going to turn the corner a little bit, entrusted us. You have been entrusted to be a partner with God in creation, in creating spaces of love, in creating spaces of hope, in creating spaces of goodness and care for the earth, for the birds, for the animals, and yes, those human animals too. David is marveling, but there is something I want you to pay even more attention to in Psalm 8. Verse 2, out, you have such a glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. What, what does that mean? Careful, I'm going to give your tables like two minutes to discuss what it means if somebody doesn't throw an answer at me. Okay, I'm not going to make you do that because I just looked at the clock. <laughs> You're off the hook today. What it means is God has already built a wall of protection around you. Look at those words again. You have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. God is actively protecting you if you will accept it. Children know this out of the mouths of babes and infants. Children know that, right? Did he leave? Of course he is. 
and that's yeah, of course he is. The one time I really want to point him out. <laughs> when that young man walks in this room, have you ever seen anyone that feels more safe? Right? This is a safe place with safe people. I know it. I'm going to live it out that way. I run through here like I own the place with absolute confidence that nothing bad is going to happen to me. What if we could translate that confidence into our journey into the world? What if we could translate that confidence that says, God, who is majestic and wonderful, whose name is sovereign and majestic, how incredible you are and how incredible it is that you've made us to be partners in sharing your love and you're so invested in us that you're protecting us. And we don't need to worry about attacks from adversaries and enemies or avengers. Which is not Captain Marvel. <laughs> you know what? Let's do it this way. Repeat after me. O oh Lord, our Lord. O oh Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name. How wonderful that you have made. State your name. State your name. A little lower than you. And you have given. State your name. The ability to care for all of nature. The ability to care for all of nature. And you have promised. And you have promised. State your name. That you will. That you will. Protect me. Protect me. From all enemies. From all enemies. Oh Lord, our Lord. Oh Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name. Um, in all the earth. In all the earth. How'd that feel? Weird. You never make me state my name. I get it. But hopefully, there's some comfort. There's some knowledge that God loves you. That God trusts you. That God is counting on you. And that God will protect you. To do what God is calling us to do. To care for others. To care for the earth. To care for God's great creation. This week, as you go about your week, go in confidence. Knowing that the one whose name is majestic and sovereign is caring for you. Amen.